Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to talk from my perspective as a couples therapist specializing in infidelity recovery for the last 16 years and combine that with my own infidelity more than 25 years ago on the things that I wish I had known, in the, especially in the early days of recovery. Also from what I've heard from many of my clients over the years, the things that they wish they had known in the early days and the beginning of their recovery journey as well. First, you need to know that it is not about you. Helping your partner heal from the wound that you created needs to be the focus, not your fear, not your guilt, not your shame. It's far too easy to make it about you rather than listening to your spouse's pain and the struggle that they're having and that you need to take responsibility for your actions. As important as this step is, it is one of the toughest things for the unfaithful spouse to realize in recovery. Certainly recognize your shame and fear and guilt and grieve over what your actions have cost your spouse and your relationship and you. And then go to work. Go work with a therapist or a coach or a sponsor on those things that keep you stuck. Second, you need a realistic understanding of the timeline of surviving infidelity. Recently, I was talking with a wife who had been unfaithful about three years ago or so, and she told me that she had no idea how long her husband would be haunted and tortured by her infidelity. He was tormented by intrusive thoughts and even nightmares that still caused these painful emotions for almost two years. It took months for him to feel safe enough to reconcile with her. But reconciliation didn't stop the ongoing consequences that they continued to experience. She mistakenly believed that they would quickly put all of this behind them and then move on. But there was no way for her to protect him from the consequences of what she had done. Understanding the timeline of surviving infidelity may help you not be so impatient or frustrated that the healing is taking so long, especially much longer than either one of you really wanted or expected. And third, you need to know the necessity of telling the whole truth today, not putting it off, not trickle truth. Because as unfaithfuls, we foolishly think about ourselves and we want to avoid the consequences. We fail to give our mate what they need. We try to control the situation by the flow of information, robbing them of the choice that they need to be able to make. It's our self-centeredness and our self-protection that prohibits us from acting in our mate's best interest. And your refusal to accept that they can't move forward until they can at least understand what happened. They can put their arms around the what happened. That's a major roadblock to recovery. So coming clean at the beginning of the process is so important and it will save months of suffering and shorten the time of recovery. Fourth, I wish I had known what my actions would cost. When I betrayed my wife, I was so short-sighted that I never even considered what it might cost her as well as my family. My only thought was, nobody will ever know. And I wish I had known what my self-centeredness and my carelessness actually would cost those most important to me. I believe if I had allowed myself to be aware of the cost, it would have saved me from making one of the biggest mistakes of my life. And fifth, you need to know, you got to know, there is hope in surviving infidelity. Not knowing that there was hope leaves many people feeling skeptical, and hesitant to give their marriage even a chance. And I hear almost daily from both parties that had they known it was possible, they would have sought help more quickly. Also, hope is greatly increased when the unfaithful spouse becomes the leader, the protector of the recovery process and of the relationship itself. And sixth, I wish I had known what love truly is. We have all craved feelings that we labeled as love. Feelings that come from someone you valued, value you in return. 
And in fact, the more you esteem the other person, the stronger that effect is. But for those of us who have been unfaithful, what we really loved was how they made us feel about ourselves. The reflection of our image in their eyes is intoxicating. But love isn't that feeling. Rather, it's the grace that our spouse extends, not when we deserve it, but rather when we least deserved it. My wife continued to love me even after I broke her heart. The difference between the two loves is amazing. And the first type of love made me feel good about myself, but that second left me feeling cared for and cherished, not because of who I was, but rather in spite of who I was. And I think that love helped me transform into the man that I am today. I would love to hear the lessons from others of you who have been unfaithful what lessons have you learned along the way that you wish you had known earlier in the process? It might serve as encouragement to other people that are watching this video. Finding the right step and a safe place to heal is so important. And if you're looking for that safe place to heal as a couple, I invite you to look at our EMS weekend. It is full of expert insight and practical steps that any couple can take to find healing and restoration for their marriage. You can go to the Affair Recovery website and under the Programs and Courses tab, all the information is there. I hope you'll take a look and give it a serious consideration for yourself, for your spouse, and for your relationship. Thanks so much for joining me again this week. It's always good to be with you. Know that we at Affair Recovery are hoping for the best for you and for your relationship. Know that we're here to support you any way we can. I'll be back again next week. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks so much.